This is a PowerPoint on 2.3 equivalent figures. In this PowerPoint, we are going to cover equivalent lines, equivalent plane figures, equivalent solids, and some examples of questions for two equivalent figures. Equivalent lines. Two lines are equivalent if they are of the same length, regardless of their shape. So here's a straight line, and the orange is an arc. But if I tell you that both of them are 18 centimeters, even though they don't look the same, they're still considered equivalent. So since they are the same length, the line segment and the arc are equivalent lines. Equivalent plane figures. Two figures are equivalent if they have the same area, regardless of their shape. Here is a rectangle and here is a triangle. You'll need to remember what your rules for area of rectangles and triangles are, um, but if I give you some measurements, you have the length is 4 centimeters and the width is 2 centimeters of this rectangle. And I give you that the base of this triangle is 4 and the height is also 4 centimeters. When we want to calculate the area of a rectangle, we just do length times width. So in this case, 4 times 2 is 8 centimeters squared. When we're dealing with area specifically or any type of measurement of area, length, or volume, you should remember to put the units. So in this case, it's centimeters squared because it's area. And if we do the triangle, the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So I have 4 times 4 divided by 2, which gives me 8 centimeters squared. Even though these two are not the same type of shape, they have the same area. So because of this, this rectangle and triangle are considered equivalent plane figures. Equivalent solids. Two solids are equivalent if they have the same volume, regardless of their shape. And remember the difference between what a plane figure and a solid is. A solid is 3D in shape. It has an inside, whereas a polygon or an equivalent plane or a plane figure is just a regular polygon flat on a surface. So here are two solids. You should recognize them. This is a cube and this is a pyramid. The measurements of the cube is given to you, so the length and the width and the height are the same thing because a cube has the same uh, length, width, and height. It's two centimeters. And this is a square base pyramid. And I tell you that the base is two centimeters across and in length, and it is six centimeters high. So again, kind of like area, you're going to need to know your rules for volume. A cube is length times width times height. So the volume in this case will be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, and remember your units, centimeters cubed for volume. For our pyramid, the rule is length times width times height divided by 3, or area of base times height divided by 3. In my case, I have it being 2 times 2 times 6, and divided by 3 gives me 8 centimeters cubed as well. So even though these two shapes or these two solids are clearly not the same solid or the same shape, it doesn't matter. They have the same volume, so this cube and this pyramid are considered equivalent solids. Here are some types of questions that you might have seen involving equivalent figures in the past. Here is a cube and here is a rectangular prism, and I give you certain measurements. The cube and the rectangular prism below are equivalent. If the cube has 10 centimeter edges, and the base of a prism is 5 cm by 10 cm rectangle, find the height of the prism. So let me tell you how we would go about solving a question like this. What are we given in this question and what is being asked? We are given two solids and we know that they are equivalent and equivalent solid solids have the same volumes. And what can we use to help us with the volume? We have certain dimensions that we need to find the volume of the cube, and we have some dimensions for the prism, but again, we're missing the height. So let's start with all of this stuff that we know. We know that the volumes need to be the same because these two solids are equivalent. So the volume of the cube needs to be equal to the volume of a prism. If you remember, the volume for a cube is length times width times height, and the same thing for a prism is length times width times height. Only a cube has the same length, width, and height. In our case, we have that for the cube, we have all of we have everything we need. We have all the measurements. So we do 10 times 10 times 10. Whereas on the other side, we only know the length and width of this prism, but we do not know the height. So I'm just going to plug in what I know. When I simplify, I get that 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, and that's equal to 50 times h. 
and this is just a simple equation. If we divide both sides by 50, we get that 20 is equal to h. And that's all there is to it. Try it yourself. A sphere, a cylinder, and a cone are equivalent. And they each have a radius of 3 centimeters. Find, first, the height of the cylinder, and second, the height of the cone. To help get you started, ask yourself what are you given and what is being asked. You are given the radius of all three solids. Additionally, you know that they are equivalent, which means that their volumes are the same. How do you begin with this information? Start by getting the formulas for the volumes of each solid and create an equation. Plug in the values that you know and see what happens. I encourage you to pause this video and try it on your own before going on to the next slide. Here's how the answer would go about. You have the volume of the sphere that's equal to the volume of the cylinder that's also equal to the volume of a cone because they are equivalent to solids. Here are the formulas for each of these solids in terms of their volume. I begin with the volume of the sphere because I actually know everything that I need to solve for the actual volume of the sphere. And when I plug it all in, my 4 pi times 3 cubed divided by 3 gives me 36 pi, or if you want, approximately 113.04. The volume of the cylinder in this case, we plug in what we know. It's area of base times height, so remember that the base of a cylinder is a circle. So the area of that base would be pi r squared. I know what r is, it's 3. So if I plug that in, I get pi times 3 squared times h. If I simplify further, I get 9 pi times h, and if you would like to, you can multiply 9 times pi, get 28.26 times height. I haven't yet put my measurements yet, but I will at the very end. Then we do the volume of the cone. Now the volume of a cone is area of base times height divided by 3 and again the cone's base is a circle so the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I have pi times 3 squared times the height divided by 3 and again if I just plug in what I know and simplify I will get 3 pi is equal sorry 3 pi times height and if I do multiply in my pi I get 9.42 times the height. So technically I have all of the volumes up to what I know so far. And remember, they're all equal. So if we make the volume of the sphere equal to the volume of the cylinder, we know everything we need to know about the sphere, but we're missing the height of, of the cylinder. So we have 113.04 is equal to 28.26 times the height, and we get that 4 is equal to h, solving for h. Same thing with the cone, we make it equal to the sphere, because we know everything we need to know about the sphere. So we make it equal to the volume of the cone, Solve for h, so divide both sides by 9.42, and we get that h is equal to 16. So in conclusion, the height of the cylinder is 4 centimeters, and the height of the cone is 16 centimeters. And that is the end of 2.3 on equivalent figures. Up next, we're going to talk about optimization again, but this time it's of equivalent figures.